Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like. Yeah, I heard we talk a lot of football. Also, check out our podcast where we do that as well down below in the description. All right, John. Here's what Kyle Shanahan said about risk and the risk they took in trading up to three when he spoke to the media on Monday. You got to take risks, and this is a risk we were willing to take. Um, we looked at how our four years have gone. We looked at how we want the next four years to go, um, and we looked where we're at in the draft and the, the options that are there. And that's why sitting there looking at this stuff since January and going all the way through the process, um, we felt pretty strongly we were going to get left at the altar sitting there at 12. We felt pretty strongly we were going to get left at the altar sitting there at 12. He talked like a man who felt like he had no choice, not like a man who had weighed all of his, all of his options. He knew he needed a quarterback, and he didn't think he was going to get one at 12. Let me just start by saying this, and we mentioned it a little earlier in the podcast. Uh, I, I do think the numbers on quarterback drafts, like if you just go the last decade, are a little skewed. Like quarterbacks that make it in the top 10. Because most years, there's two, right? A lot of times there's a Goff Wentz, Mariota Winston. Some years there's Daniel Jones, Kyler Murray. There's not very often that there are really just four elite prospects, like Trevor Lawrence locked to go one. Zach Wilson, honestly, is pro day. I, I'm not comparing him to this player. I don't think he's going to be this good. He's kind of got an Aaron Rodgers vibe to his game, just rolling around, slinging it. It looks sweet. Then you got Fields and Lance, who are just blue chip prospects, right? 6'4", can fucking run like a deer, got big arms. They're, those guys are just top 10 prospects. And then you got Mac Jones kind of, off the top rope, like, hey, guys, I'm here, too. <laughs> it's just it's just kind of interesting, and, it, and his sweet players are saying he's better than Tua, who just went in the top five. I just think it's kind of a unique year. Like, because remember the year that Baker, Sam, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, Lamar, looking back, like, Josh Allen was clearly, and Lamar were the physical freaks, and one went seven, one went 32. Josh Rosen's now a practice squad player. Sam uh, probably about to get kicked out of his team at any moment. And Baker's fine. Yeah, but I mean, this this year feels like five guys where I think he's they start doing the math. You just start getting the information on these guys. Like the only guy that might be left to us is Mac Jones. Like I think the other four guys were locked to go in like the top six or seven. Right. Look, if we uh, yes, yes, to answer your question, yes, I agree with that. If we look at 2018, which is the one to look at because it's hard to find in recent memory, you don't have five guys going in the first round. But even four uh, in the top ten is a lot. Right? Yeah, I mean, you had – Rosen go 10. We had 2012 where four guys went in the top 25. Brought, uh, Luck, Griffin, Tannehill, Whedon. Um, you had four in 11, Cam, Jake Locker, Blaine Gabbert, Christian Pot Ponder. Those were four guys in the top 12 picks. What, what, do you have Tannehill – what what pick was Tannehill? Tannehill was – 12, oh, 11, eight. Somewhere. 8. See, I think that's a good example of Tannehill – probably has a lot in common with like a field's lance of just like he was six four six five he could fucking run and he had a big arm and it turns out his arm was probably a little overrated it's, but it's pretty good right yeah. and that's just that type player just goes in the top 10 just the raw physical elite tools and these guys have better tools so you're just looking like that to me is back to the mac jones justin fields you only trade up if you realize well the elite the elite skill guys they ain't sniffing pick 12 well, think about the 18 draft. You've got five quarterbacks drafted. You have two MVP level players, we think, right at this point. One of them won one. Josh Allen, we think, will be one. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. Guess yeah. who are the two most skilled quarterbacks in that draft? You've got a complete, bu you've got a total bust in Rosen. You've got, uh, to this point, a bust, but not Rosen level in Darnold. Might not be his fault. We're not really I sure. I think, yet. you know, remember, did you ever get these like when you were in like sixth grade, uh, INC, incomplete? Incomplete. I'd give him an incomplete. So it's not, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I didn't fail, but I didn't get an A. I mean, well, he's not a franchise. Here's what he's not a franchise quarterback right now. But I, are we sure? No, but that's what he's not right now. Just yeah. like, like I was texting with Jeff Schwartz the other day and I said, we were talking about just the quarterbacks. And I was like, look, yeah, it, it could be crazy when they draft Mac Jones. It could be crazy in two years. Who knows? But here's what I know about Goff and wrote and, and Wentz. Goff was worse then Goff was better then Wentz was better then Wentz was worse. Now they're both on different teams, and it feels like Wentz is about to be better again. Like, it just changes a lot. Colton Miller was worse. Now he's better than Mike McGlinchey. Things change. So with these guys, you're right on Sam. 
And well, Baker, that's, that's ba- the statement. No one gets, no one stays the same. You either get better or you get worse. Baker went no number one, one. And right now he feels like he's, I would put him in franchise quarterback. Like they're going to have to pick up his option. They're going to probably extend him as long as he's got a solid coach. It feels like he'll be good enough. And that thing, they'll just kind of chug along. And they'll be like, yeah, we should have taken Allen. But, you know, in the end, we got a franchise. We can, we can live with this. We'll, we didn't, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. So it, let's say this draft plays out that way. Right, where it's, there's two MVPs, an incomplete, a solid franchise guy, and a bust. Like, well, when you're drafting third of the five, you got a pretty good shot. You've put yourself in good position. Here's where the pressure, though, is, guy. If you tell me that's going to be the case, five of them, and that exact rate, right, which I think is probably very likely because that is the only example based on all the previous years where it was like, they were viewed as pretty big talents. Like Christian Ponder was a crazy stretch. Whedon, like some of those guys. Were, if those guys were in this draft, people would be like, I ain't touching them. Like Mac Jones is infinitely better in prospect than those guys. When you trade pick 12 and two other ones and a three, you better end up with one of the sweet ones. Because that this is where I get back to, if you end up with the incomplete guy, it's it derails careers. It derails the franchise. It's just that yeah, simple. Yeah, well, I, and, and I think like, I think it's hard for Kyle to have it incomplete. Unless you have injuries. Like Jimmy, that was like, this thing's kind of an incomplete, but it's just time to move on, right? I think with Kyle, it'll be like it works or it doesn't work. And I think it's going to be hard for, for, that's what I'm saying. There is no, gra- there is no going to be no gray zone. It's either going to be pass or fail. And if it passes, it'll probably be pretty good. If it fails, they got major problems. Well, this is and where my, like, my ultimate take has been now for the last three or four days is that the, th- I just think that a lot there is the possibility whether they take Lance Fields, Mac Jones, somehow they get Zach Wilson. Failing is an option. That's part of risking risk it for the biscuit. Part of risking it for the biscuit is like you overthrow them. You, the, the company you invest in goes bankrupt. Like it's just everything. And we saw it this year with Corona. There is nothing that's safe at any moment in time, whether it's football, whether it's real life. It can always go wrong. I, I just think we have that information, right? Things are out of your control, right? Who yes. knows? Yes. Something but, happens but, to the guy's family and something. He's just never mentally the same. I don't know. You just but I you think never know. But I think that's part of what that clip we play. That's part of what Kyle Shanahan is saying. Like, we've spent a full month diving into this thing. We thought about our last four years, and we thought about where we want to be in four years. And, yes, they made the Super Bowl. That's a big part of the story. I think if we had to pick one image from the first four years of Kyle Shanahan's tenure, it would be the photo that you always tweet of Kyle sitting in the locker room, looking miserable, just sitting on his butt on the carpet with his back against it, a little equipment thing, holding the football, just in a daze, locked in. Maybe it was a pre, whatever. Well, they might have been like one and nine at the time or something. I think part of I don't think they. I don't want to say it was a desperate thing to do because desperate has like an inherently negative connotation to it. But I do think they were kind of in a desperate situation. And this is where I go back to what I said the other day. It's just as risky, maybe more risky to do nothing in this circumstance than to do what they did. And I think they felt like how else are we going to get to that level where we need to go if we don't do this? And You know, once you're in the Indiana Jones and you're standing on the middle little piece of wood and the one behind you starts, the wall starts closing in and the only way you can go is forward, then you, then all of a sudden it doesn't feel so risky to be running down a two by four over a cliff. 100%. See, to me, that's that's where where, they are. That's where I'd push back. Ideally, you never want to do deals out of desperation. I know. But sometimes you're up against a tree and a grizzly bear is running at you. And you, you know, you get to a position like uh, the famous story about FedEx. The, the the coach for uh, the Atlanta Falcons dad. Yeah. Have you ever read like in 1978, he was down to his last $20,000. He was not going to be able to make the payment for the company. He went to a casino and he played like a hand of blackjack or two and he tripled it. And that's how he kept his company alive. Like I didn't have you a choice. Wanna... He was losing that $20,000 either way, but, but he, he made it. No, no. Like, but I'm saying he, that $20,000, if he lost it at blackjack, he yeah, was, was going to lose the $20,000 on the, yeah. yeah. It, it was done. He either was going to make it or he was fucked. But sometimes, like, I, that's where I argued coming in this offseason why Jimmy couldn't come back. They were in an untenable quarterback situation. They couldn't roll it back. And now the narrative can be whatever you want on Jimmy. I don't even need to argue it anymore. No one does that have been like, this is not sustainable. They showed you. They spent the last two and a half months 
I, I think I, I can give you a decent idea because I've been a part of somewhat of it. I, I know the project that they just took under. Every single guy, I would imagine. Kyle, J- now John and Adam Peters had spent during the season and do it, but probably did it again. And I would imagine Mike, Medan- Mike McDaniels, once Sala and LaFleur leave, maybe whoever else some of his trusted lieutenants are, whether it's Welker, whether it's Rich Gangalino, whether it's whoever, and all the pro scouts, you did a deep dive on every snap, all five of these guys. Maybe you include Trevor Lawrence just so you can stack them. And maybe even do a deep thing on Jimmy just to like double check, take a deep breath. And they came to the conclusion that 12, multiple other first rounders, they even said like, yeah, we were willing to pay a premium to get in there early. Like they admitted it. They were willing to pay a premium because their quarterback situation was so shitty. And I think they, once you do the deep dive projects, you realize like, God damn, these guys are pretty talented. That's where I think to pull the trigger, it'd be like investing in something that people think is pretty crazy. But if you know, if you're like, God damn, I see where this is going. We've been in the podcast space for a while. Why did I feel good about it four years ago? Because I knew radio's fucked. Now everyone's like, God, who listens to radio anymore? Well, no shit. I knew it four years ago. Once you t- can look and see the big picture, I bet even Kyle was like, God, this Trey Lance, like his physical skills. And that gets back to the Josh Allen. And I saw people tweeting about like, well, why wouldn't he have been more invested? And we'll get to Kirk Cousins here in a second, but like in Deshaun Watson, those guys would have been perfect. Because you learn with time. You get better. He went through experiences with no Kirk Cousins, with Jimmy, with Jimmy getting hurt, with Jimmy playing well. You get better as I you think, age because you go through. I think playing through. Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. And the, I, I think the when they were on the ground kind of bleeding out and Josh Allen gave him a curb stomp this year, had to I really believe I don't think that created this I think that hammered it home when he witnessed that on the sideline in Arizona and that guy that has to be one of his top five games he's ever played I mean it was a clinic yeah it was I think it was a historically great game for Bill's quarterback wasn't it <laughs> but it was just it wasn't even just the whatever his completion percentage was like 85 it was how the balls were going a hundred miles an hour and hitting guys directly in the hands it was like Kyle, this is what you, this is. And, and then you start realizing like the bills are going to be a powerhouse for a while because of that. Yeah. That's well, where they, I get back to. I, it's hard for me after witnessing Mahomes, then witnessing that for them to not go with one of the higher upside guys, especially after he admits he spent the last couple of months doing these deep dives and this, these projects together as a group. And then they decided, right. How would you take the easy route after doing all yeah, that? Yeah, because but I don't know. But that's where I go back to what I said earlier. I don't think you view it as the easy route. I think you, if you do, if you draft Mac Jones, it's because you think he's going to be the better quarterback. I got a DM so, from someone who's had some good information over the years that said that the main one of the main reasons they went to see Mac Jones is John Lynch is a big fan, and then you start going, well, who John Lynch like? You know, uh, Solomon, Solomon Thomas. Thomas. Like, I, I could see John Lynch liking this guy. Yeah. Uh, who'd he who'd he win with brad johnson like in his mind he's a defensive guy probably loves the guy like so much of the solomon thing was like oh remember you had a class and the um but i, I think to go back solomon to the, a raider now uh, he is to to go back to the risk part of it the risk i think kyle views the risk not in the trade the risk is in the pick the 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 risk is not Oh well, you know you chose this over running it back with Jimmy, and I, and I think that's where this trade and the timeline with Deshaun Watson line up. Like Deshaun, if you're gonna if you were willing to trade this much for a pick, you were willing to trade a little bit more for Deshaun Watson. You would have been, yeah. But that's not an option right now. So then it was Still about not. we've already made the decision. We need to do something. So here's what we'll do: we'll do this instead. The risk is not in not like when you choose this, you are you are choosing to not go down the road with Jimmy Garoppolo or Sam Darnold or whoever. That's not where the risk in this lies. The risk lies in it's hard to pick quarterbacks. Can you pick the right one? Agreed. 